Yeah, Cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. You Here on YouTube, I see a lot of creators showing you the behind the scenes on how they film B-roll sequences. They show you the in-camera transitions and the different techniques they use to make stunning looking videos. Some of these creators spend a lot of time perfecting each shot. They might do it 10 or 15 times, maybe more. In a shoot that I did not long ago, we were showing the clients food products and how to put together the recipes. We shot something like 16 different recipes in one day and I really only had one chance at shooting each thing. So I didn't really have the time to really think about my shots, I just had to go with it and I had to vary them up as much as possible so that at the end result I could do a little bit of editing and get a good result from it. I was set up at one side of the studio with a sort of flat table and a basic lighting set up and when the food products were getting prepared over the other side of the studio, they were then getting taken to a photographer. He was doing the photos for the website and for their brochures and then it would be brought to me. I then had to get a clip for each stage of the recipe and sort of make that into a quick, you know, 40 second video showing you how to prepare the food. I only really had a chance to shoot each shot once, so if someone was pouring sauce, I had one go getting it. If someone was, you know, seasoning the product at the end, I only had one shot at getting that because the next product was coming right back around. So in this kind of pressured environment, I followed a few things to make sure that my shots would be varied and that I could get the most out of them in the finished product. Before you do anything, make sure that you have the best lighting setup possible. The nicer your light looks, the softer it looks, the more dynamic it looks, you know, the better your video is going to look in the end. For me, I had a nice daylight balanced light pointing diagonally down from the right and then a bounce on the left which kind of fill in the shadows a little bit. This seemed to do the trick and it was very basic, I only really had to use one light and a nice bounce. I had to make sure that this lighting was fairly bright and powerful as in tip number two, I would suggest shooting in a high frame rate. If you shoot in a high frame rate and you get the slow motion, it'll give you a lot more room to work with in your shot and it'll cover any camera shakes, you know, that you might have had. I did shoot all of these clips handheld as it was the fastest way to get the shots, so shooting in that high frame rate really helped cover up any camera shakes that I got when shooting. Slow motion is also just really nice to look at and a lot of clients like it and you can really make your shots a bit more dramatic in the edit. My next step would be to shoot in manual focus. Now, shooting in manual focus, if you're not used to it, it might take a little bit of practice, but when you really get that down, you can get the most out of your shots. This allowed me to set exactly what my focus point should be. Instead of the autofocus and the camera, just kind of trying to decide what it wants to focus on, I got to choose the bit of the product or the bit of the action that I really wanted the camera to focus on, um, and then it would stay there, depending on where I moved the camera. My next step would be to shoot in a set white balance. Um, don't use auto white balance, as this might change if any of the lighting in the room changes at all. Um, with different focal lengths it might change as well and then it's going to be a really tough job in the final edit to sort of match your colour balance so you want to set it as something that you like um, that means all the clips will be consistent with the same white balance set it as custom if you can when you actually come to filming each shot I would suggest varying up where you start the shot you know go low on some, go high on others get really close on some of the detail shots that you might need this just sort of gives it variety and that will really help at the end make sure you utilise your camera movement as I shot all this in 100 frames per second, the slow-mo was nice enough that I could kind of do smooth pans in and out, smooth pans to the left and the right. In my case, I then had all my shots and I had to make the most of what I shot because there was no reshoots, that was my one chance and I had to make sure that I could pull something nice out of it in the edit. The first thing I did was go through all my shots and separate the good from the bad and just get the parts of the shot that I wanted to use. So if there was any that had a little bit of camera shake or they were a little bit bumpy, then I used Warp Stabilizer just to smoothen them out and make them a little bit nicer looking. When I was choosing my music, I opted for something a little bit more fast paced. I could make the edit nice and snappy um, so that none of the clips were lingering on the screen for too long. I then would use speed ramping to, you know, edit to the music, but also draw attention to the nicer parts of the action. So once you've got it all edited to the music, you've done your speed ramping and you've stabilised your shots and you've got it looking nice, I would then go back and I would utilise keyframes and panning to sort of give your clips a little bit more movement where some of them are lacking. 
if any of your shots are static, then I would suggest you know slowly punching into the shot or slowly punching out of the shot um, in order to just add a little bit of sort of fake movement. Create a keyframe at the start of your clip, then go to the end of your clip and maybe punch in by 5%. This then gives you a sort of slow, gradual zoom in that mimics some camera movement that you didn't maybe get on the day. I would also use position keyframes if there's a part of the action that you know you want to draw attention to and you've already done your pan in and out I'd set a keyframe in the position part of Premiere and I would sort of make sure that the bit of action that you want the audience to focus on maybe stays in the centre of the screen throughout the clip You can do this really easily by adjusting the keyframes This is a good one and this can really take some boring shots and make them just a little bit more exciting If you have two shots that are quite similar and you know they have to be one after the other but you think that they look just a little bit too stale and boring side by side, then you might want to utilize sort of flares or film burns to sort of bridge that gap between the two clips. I'd maybe even start one of the clips at 100% scale and then the second one have it punched in a bit so it does look like it's a different clip. But utilize like a flare or a film burn to sort of like ease this transition. I used one here that I just found online and um, I just overlaid it on top and it kind of masks the transition and sort of keeps things flowing. If you have a time, then I would strongly recommend doing some sort of sound design in your video. Sound design is one of the most important things for really making your video immersive and, you know, connecting with the audience. In this case, we didn't actually have any time budgeted in to sort of do any sound design, which was a real shame. But if you do have the time, then I would definitely spend arguably as much time as you spent on the edit on the sound design. Once that's all said and done, you're happy with the sound, you're happy with the angles, you're happy with the effects and sort of the flow of the whole thing, then I'd whack on a nice color grade to really help sell it. When it comes to food, I went for something a bit more vibrant so that the ingredients popped a little bit more. So that's all my tips for shooting a sort of trendy food video that I only had a limited amount of time to shoot. And I think they came out quite nice, the clients were happy with them. And I hope you can take some of these techniques in your shoots. And if you are against the time, you can see that you can come up with some nice stuff, even if you're limited to like sort of one chance at each shot. So let me know what you think about this. I do run it in these sort of time sensitive kind of shoots quite often and you're kind of under pressure to make something nice for the client. If you like this kind of content and you want to see more of the stuff that I kind of do for my work and get some tips on how to shoot some better videos, then consider subscribing to the channel. That would be really great.